If you prioritize properly, 10 things, right? The two most important will give you an 80% return on your investment. All right, you made it to episode three of the Devoted Life Podcast. My name is Justin Kendrick, and I am so glad you've decided to join us. The Devoted Life Podcast, all through 2024, coming out the last Thursday of every month, 30 minutes to uh, set your life's attention on Jesus. How do I live a life that's devoted, focused, centered on Him? And, uh, and that really making the most of the opportunity I have in this life. And so this is episode three. If you haven't checked out episode one or two, I encourage you to do that. We talked about a seeking God lifestyle in episode one, and then this idea of how to pray actually in episode two. And so uh, we're gonna jump in today, episode three. I wanna talk about something that, uh, that maybe in your life you've never really thought of as a spiritual discipline. Uh, maybe when you think of spiritual disciplines, you think of prayer, you think of worship, you think of reading the Bible. But I want to talk about something that is actually mentioned frequently in Scripture. Ephesians chapter 5, be careful. Actually, it says, be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Colossians chapter 4, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders, making the most of every opportunity. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, therefore, do, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I think you're starting to get the point. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. Hebrews chapter 12, if you're not disciplined like everyone undergoes discipline, then you're not legitimate true sons and daughters at all. What are we talking about today? In episode three of the Devoted Life podcast, we are talking about time management. Time management. And before you shut this off, because you think it's like a business podcast or something, let me just emphasize the point that, uh, that this is a God-sized issue in your life, that managing your time is actually something that God is passionate about. Now, we have the American version of time, we have the Western version of time, and we have the Jesus version of time. And so I know that you know there's a, a whole kind of movement out there called the Three Mile God, right? That Jesus, when he lived his life, walked everywhere and he went three miles an hour all the time. And so uh, he wasn't on a speed train. And so time management isn't really about cramming as much possible stuff into the moments of your day. Rather, time management is about learning to be intentional with the moments that God gave you. And so let's just think about our world, right? There are a lot of things that are jockeying for your attention. And so you've got social media, you've got your phone, you've got your friendships, you've got the news, and, uh, and, and all these things are kind of happening around you. And so what I want to challenge you to do on this episode is to think about your life not as a receiver, but as an activator. In other words, I'm going to happen to the world. The world is not just going to happen to me, right? And so in our Western view of time, we often think about time in, uh, in kind of the frame that the Greeks would use and call chronos, okay? Chronos was, uh, was incremental time. So how long is this podcast? It's about 30 minutes, right? How long does it take you to drive to work? 14 minutes, right? Like you've got different times, different increments, and that's important and that's helpful. But there was a second Greek word that we don't really have an equivalent for in our modern vernacular today, and it was the Greek word kairos. And kairos means an opportune moment. It means a divine moment, a sacred moment, all right? And so what we have to realize is that every day in your life, God has buried sacred moments. He has put opportune moments, kairos moments. And so when Paul writes to make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil, he's saying that make the most of every kairos, every supreme moment, every opportunity from the Lord. And so what do we want to learn today? We want to learn how to be intentional with the time that we've been given. Okay. And so let's talk about this practically, right? Practically. How do I actually plan my time? Now, there are a lot of different personalities, a lot of different methods. Maybe you're a morning person and boom, you're up. As soon as you get up, maybe you're not a morning person and you're like super slow in the morning and it takes you like four hours to even get your brain moving and everything else. We're kind of different in the way that we're wired, but I I wanna just walk you through what I've found to be helpful. And you're not exactly like me, and so none of this is gonna be a perfect cookie cutter fit into your life, but maybe today I say two or three things, or we discuss together in a little while, two or three things 
that can actually be revolutionary over time in your life. And so everything begins, when it comes to time management, everything begins with something that's kind of obvious, but a lot of people are not using functionally with a calendar, all right, with a calendar. Now, you can do your calendar a lot of different ways. For years, I was dedicated to the paper calendar. Now I use Outlook, I use more of a digital calendar. But here's here's a crazy suggestion, okay? And I know you're already a few minutes in this podcast, and you haven't shut it off yet, it's on time management and it's about Jesus. But uh, but let's just, let's just, here's one crazy suggestion that will probably shift the way you think a little bit and you'll go, oh, I don't wanna do that. But just try it out, okay? I wanna challenge you to tell every minute of your life where to go. Tell every minute of your life where to go. And you might hear that and you think, my goodness, Justin, if I did that, all I would do is look at my calendar. No, there's actually a way to do this where you can not spend your whole life staring at your calendar, but you can live your life in an incredibly intentional way. I've been doing this for about 22 years where I've been telling my days where to go, my weeks where to go, my months where to go, and my years where to go, and my minutes where to go. And there's actually a way to do it. And so I just want to walk you through my process. Hopefully it'll be helpful for you, but this takes me less than an hour a week. All right. And so that's the first thing you've got to commit to. You've got to commit to setting a time to plan your time. Okay. If you're not willing to set a time to plan your time, then your time is always going to be running away from you and you're not going to know where you're headed or how to get there. Okay. And so one hour a week, that's your challenge for the next 30 days. I want to challenge you to spend 60 minutes every single week planning your time. Now for me, I do that Sunday afternoons. I'm a preacher. I preach a lot on Sundays, but Sunday afternoons is my time to just decompress pull out my schedule and plan out. And it takes me about an hour, a little less than an hour now, uh, every minute of my day for the next seven days, okay? And so I do wanna encourage you to try this, all right? And I'm gonna walk you through my process and how I do it. I do it in time blocks. And I typically start with work, not because it's the most important thing I do, but because it's the most time consuming thing. And so maybe you work a 40 hour job, maybe your schedule changes, maybe you're nine to five, maybe you're eight to four, maybe you make your own schedule. Whatever your circumstances might be, take a calendar and block out the time that you're going to work. Now we could do a whole separate podcast on how to manage your time at work. And some of these principles will apply, but for now, let's just say you work, okay? Maybe you work part-time and you go to school or maybe whatever it might be, your primary blocks, whether they're school or work, drop them in there. So pretend for now that's eight to five, Monday through Friday, the most basic schedule, maybe yours is really different, but whatever. Let's block that out to start. The second thing I do is I block out my time with God, my time to actually seek God in prayer. Now for me, if you listen to episode one, I start my mornings, 60 minutes alone with Jesus. And so that's the first thing that I'm blocking out. So maybe that starts at 5.30 or maybe that starts at 6 a.m. or maybe that starts at seven if you get to sleep in a little bit or nine or whatever it might be for you. But you're blocking out your time with God. You might go, Justin, I can't spend 60 minutes. So then drive 15 minutes or 30 minutes, but start somewhere where you're actually planning to have time to seek God. See, if we say, friends, that God's first in my life and then our schedules don't demonstrate that, God's not first in your life. That's just the bottom line. And so he has to actually be first in your time, right? And so you start with work because it's the biggest block. And then you say, hey, where's my time for God? After that, I've blocked out those two things. You should have some time left over in your life, right? I block out time for Sabbath, church, and sleep. Now that might sound basic, but those are other big blocks. Sabbath for me, 24 hours to pause, pray, and play. I go Friday night, 5 p.m. to Saturday night, 5 p.m almost all the time. Sometimes I have Saturday responsibilities for work that I have to shift things around, but generally my, my Sabbath time is five to five, it's 24 hours, pause, pray, and play, Friday night to Saturday night, that's how I do it. Then I've got church time, time that I'm committed to my local church, where I'm either in a group or I'm serving or whatever I'm doing there. And then I have sleep time, all right? I wanna sleep eight hours every night. Now I can do seven, and most nights that's more like seven, but I'm trying for eight. I'm trying for eight because I find that my brain is a lot sharper when I get eight. And so I'm shooting for eight, you know, but it's never nine and it's usually seven, but I'm shooting for eight. And so I block that time out. I actually have a plan. When am I going to wake up? When am I going to go to bed? Right? Pretty basic, but the vast majority of humans are not doing this. Now, if you've blocked Sabbath time, church time, sleep time, God time, work time, you don't have a ton left, but I want 
to tell you three other areas that I'm going to block out every single week. I'm going to block out key relationship time. All right. That's time with my kids. That's date night for my wife every week. That's, you know, evening commitments that I might have with friends, whatever it is. I'm going to actually block those out in my schedule. Okay. Then I'm going to block out physical exercise time. For me, that's at least five days a week, right? I'm blocking out time. Sometimes it's in the morning. Sometimes it's at night. You got to get creative sometimes with your schedule, but you got to move. You got to move, right? And if you're like 28, you're like, I don't have to move. Well, that's fine. When you hit 35, you're going to be like, oh no, I have to move, right? Things start to change in your body, but I'd encourage you start the habit earlier. All right. Then you block out hobby time. That would be the next thing. So maybe that's time to hang out, time to watch TV, time to read a book, time to do something you like, go for a walk, whatever it might be. But you actually put time and maybe you don't have it absolutely planned, but it's in your schedule as relaxed time or free time or time that's unplanned. Okay. So here's the goal. The goal is that I have something for every moment of my day. I have something. It might be relax time. It might be sleep time. It might be prayer time, but I have something for every moment of my day. Now you might say, oh my goodness, that sounds suppressive. That sounds terrible. That sounds like I'm, I'm suffocating. And, and here's what I would just say, make the most of your time for the days are evil. It is amazing to me what can be accomplished in a year or six years or 10 years or two months when you're intentional. I just went back through my reading for this last year and I just have little increments of time where I'm either listening to books, reading to books, listening to books, reading to books. I purchased like 75 books and another 30 audible books in one year, didn't read them all, but I read the majority of them and that was because I just made lots of little increments where I actually made the time. And so it's amazing what you can accomplish when you set the time aside. And so uh, you can, you're gonna have to flex, right? When you look at your life, when you look at like your day to day, oh my goodness, the kid got sick. Oh no, I got a flat tire, et cetera, et cetera. Life is full of flex moments and that's fine. But if you start to do this, here's what you're gonna find. Wow, I sat in front of a TV for three hours every day. Wow, that maybe, maybe I should use my life differently because I'm gonna be in a grave pretty soon and standing before God in the spirit, giving an account for my life. And I'm not against relaxing and I think everybody needs to chill and watch a movie now and then, but is this really the way that I plan to live my life is in front of a television forever, right? Like, is that really the best? Wait, how many hours did I scroll social? I scrolled four hours a day. Maybe like one little thing I do in my life is I just put a 15 minute limit on my social and it dings at 15 minutes and says, you're blocked. And I, I don't hit it every week or every day, but when I do hit it, I go, I'm done. Because for me, that's about as much time as I want to spend on social in a day. And so uh, usually it's less than that. But if I do hit that, I know I'm done for the day. Just a little basic thing, because you know what happens when you don't do that? Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. It's like three hours and you look down, you're like, oh my gosh. I spent three hours looking at everybody else's life and not living my own. Like, is that really the life that I want to live? Here's the result of this. The result of this is your soul gets stronger, your body gets stronger, your relationship gets stronger, your work world gets stronger, and joy increases. All right, so let me try to zoom out because I just gave you like my basic flow in a very short amount of time for how I plan my time. And uh, that was like a much wider angle. Of course, we could zoom in a lot closer and you might be listening to this right now thinking this guy's insane. I'm never gonna do this. Or maybe you're listening to this and going, ah, I need to do this. Here's my challenge for you. Try this for one month. Try it till the next podcast comes out, all right? Try this for one month and watch how God changes your world. But you might be saying, well, Justin, that's really good, but, but I don't even know what to fill my time with. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know what I should fill it with. Well, then we got to zoom out just one more layer, okay? And so I want to just ask the question, and this one takes a little bit longer, where am I going in my life? And how do I actually get God's heart for that? So for me, I think about that from 10 years to five years to one year to 90 days, okay? And I'll lay that out for you real quick. That might sound crazy to you, 10 years, five years, 
uh, one year, 90 days. Now, uh, a while ago, I heard a, uh, an interview just randomly. I think I saw it on, on a TV show uh, with, with Matthew McConaughey. And I'm not, I don't know him. I don't know his faith. I'm not saying. But he had an interesting idea. They said, hey, who's your hero? Like, who's your hero in life? And he smiled and he said, my hero is me in 10 years. And they said, wait, what? And, uh, and he said, yeah, you know, he's like, I'm always, I'm always creating a picture of who I want to be in 10 years. And I want to become the hero that I see in my mind. And I thought it was an interesting idea because it's hard to set 10 year goals because so much in life is unpredictable. But what I have found that's really helpful is to set a 10 year picture. A 10 year picture, less about how many houses do I want to buy or how many kids do I want to have or how many jobs do I want to start or whatever, but more about like in 10 years, who do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to be at 51? I'm 41 right now. What's my 10 year picture? Okay. And so what type of man, what type of leader, what type of husband, what type of father do I want to be? What type of person do you want to be? So that's where I start with a 10 year picture and I actually write it out. 10 year picture. Then I create five year plans, five year plans. Those plans are about where I want to go in the organization that I lead in my family, in my kids' lives, in my marriage. Where do I want to go? What are my five year plans? 10 year picture, five year plans. And again, this takes some time. This takes hours and hours. But if you really want to be able to fill that schedule in each week in a way that moves you somewhere, then you have to actually take the time to think about these things, right? 10 year picture, five year plan, then I have one year goals. I have one year goals that I'm looking to actually execute and they're almost always connected to my five year goals. I do this for my organization and I do this for my personal life. I do it for both. So one year goals, okay? And then from those one year goals, I have 90 day goals. In the next three months, how am I going to move ahead on those one year goals that fit in to those five year plans that fit in to that 10 year picture? Okay. And so I know that may seem massively overwhelming for you, but if it is, I want to encourage you to start by getting a Bible and getting a, a journal and beginning to talk to Jesus about 10 years, not about where you'll live or about, you know, how much money you'll make, but simply about who as character, as a character, who do you want to be? What kind of dad, what kind of mom, what kind of brother, what kind of sister, what kind of Christian do you want to be? in 10 years and then start scaling it back from there. All right, you're doing okay? You're doing all right? I wanna flush this out. I invited one of my friends, the great Mike Schnepp is with us today to talk about time management. Michael, it's good to have you on to the here. Devoted Life Podcast. Welcome. And uh, for everybody that doesn't know Mike, me and Mike have been in ministry now for a while together. And, uh, and we talk a lot about planning our time. You know, I'm a little bit insane about personal disciplines. And I think that's why I like Mike Schnepp so much because uh, he's even more insane about personal disciplines. He decided he was going to start weightlifting like a month ago and he's already like outlifting me in every single category. And, uh, and Mike, you're just one of the most disciplined humans I've ever met. You're always kind of shy about it, but, um, but in the sense that you don't, you don't brag about your discipline, but when, when you put your mind to something, doesn't matter what it is, spiritually, physically, organizationally, uh, you just, you just follow through. And, uh, and your ability to stay disciplined just inspires me. And, uh, and so grateful to have you. And just to chat a little bit about this area of time management. And, uh, and when you first started planning your time, um, think about like the, the one or two things that kind of helped you uh, right away. What comes to mind when you think of like, hey, as I started planning my time and getting more disciplined in my time, what were the things that kind of helped you get going? Yeah, I'd always planned a the life outside of work really well. Like yep, you said, yep. a lot of hobbies, whether it's different adventure sports or whatever. And so that always came naturally, but planning work. I remember it was probably seven or eight years ago that you actually challenged me to take the next level of planning yep. at work. And I did it for about a month. And I remember coming to you and saying one of the most stupid things I had ever said. I came and said, hey, now that I'm planning my schedule, <laughs> I, I think I can I think I can do double the work I've been carrying. Yep. And, and if you that. know Justin, he already gives you typically more work than you can do. And yep. so I came and said, I think I can carry double what yep. I'm carrying. And so you just got to this resolution of um, first that actually managing your calendar. You're going to be shocked at how much time you actually have. Yeah. Yeah. 
and what you can do with it. And then secondly, just resolving you are in control. You are in control yeah. of your calendar. Yeah. You know, like the world exists to pull on you. Yes. Marketing, people, meetings, and you can say no. Yes. And so once I decided I don't have to say yes to everything, I can say yes to the things that matter the most to me. Right. To make space for the things that I value. Uh, that that made me realize that the things I care about, they actually have enough time. Yeah. And so, you know, you begin to live thinking at the end of my life, what matters most? And am I giving the time to that now? You yep. know, Annie Dillard is, is an American author. She says this so good. How we spend our days is of course, how we spend our lives. Mm -hmm. What we do with this hour and that one is what we are doing. And a schedule defends us from chaos and whim. Mm. And so beginning That's to good. live with that in mind of, of a picture of who I want to be when I'm on my deathbed, 80, 90 years old, what are the things I want to give my time to? Yeah. That really just clarified what I want to spend my time on and then just freed me to go, I don't really have to spend time on that. Yep. And I don't care about that hobby and I can let that go because it doesn't really add to who I'm going to be. Yep. You know? Yeah. And I remember just watching you uh, over the last number of years uh, just massively increase in efficiency. And a lot of people, they're just not disciplined enough to do that. But um, you do it really, really well is, you know, like in other words, you'll take on something and then you'll you'll lock it in and kind of make it a part of your world and then it expands your capacity, you know? And it's just, it is a crazy phenomena that we are capable of far more than what we think we're capable of. And so like getting that in your head, even today as you listen to that, you're thinking, oh my goodness, I can never do that. Could you find an hour to plan your week? You know, start there, right? Like just start there. And maybe you end up planning half your time for a while. Well, half your time's a lot better than none of your time, right? And then you get to the point where it's like, hey, every hour of my day, is spoken for somewhere. You know, it's the same principle like with our money, right? Like if you don't tell your money where to go, it's like sheep grazing in the wilderness. They just wander off and you're like, where did all my money go? You know, it's like, well, they wandered, right? But when you tell your time where to go, it's just amazing the efficiency. Uh, I remember uh, my dear friend, Lance Witt, he always says that uh, you are ridiculously in control of your own life. And then he says, you have to take your calendar by the throat. And I like that that imagery of like, you know, have you taken your calendar by the throat and been like, come here, you, because otherwise that sheep is going to wander into the wilderness. You know, it's just like, it's going to just, it's going to, and you're going to be like, what did we just do for the last four hours? And you know what you did? Nothing. But you can't stay neutral in life. You're either, you're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. And so a lot of times, um, hey, listen, free time can be moving forward because part of time management is acknowledging limits. And God, this was a tough one for me, God created limits. We cannot do it all, right? This is why the Sabbath is so important. Every person, I'm convicting someone right now, who ignores the command to Sabbath is fighting against God-given limits in their life. You're not willing, I wanna be my own Lord. You're not willing to submit to the boundaries of time that God has created for the human life. And so you've got to say, you're God, I'm not, there are limits. But when you embrace those limits, it actually inspires uh, greater impact rather than lesser impact. So it's just a huge thing. Um, when you think of time management and challenges to time management, right? Mm -hmm. Like what comes, uh, like for me, I'm, I'm like my wife, I'm super proud of Chrissy. She is not a morning person. Mm -hmm. And for years, she was just frustrated with that. Uh, but now she is so disciplined in her morning routine, but that was like a real thing for her, you know, to like really kind of lock in the mornings. Cause for me, I like, I open my eyes and I'm like a hundred percent, I'm all in. Um, that's not her world. How about for you? Like what have been some of the challenges for time management that you faced? I think FOMO, most people yeah. wrestle with. Yeah, uh, it's just good. Feeling like man, I want to be a part of everything. I want to be in part. I want to do this thing, I'll, especially with hobbies. If you're not careful, hobbies can just grow. You yeah. find yourself, I'm playing softball on Monday night. I'm skiing right. every weekend. Yeah. I'm in the pickleball league. I'm golfing with the guys on Saturdays. And, yep. and suddenly yep. you're giving way too much time to things that actually don't add that much value yep. in terms of scope and priority. And right, so right. being willing to sacrifice things that are good for what's most important mm. is so critical with time management because we all live with not an infinite amount of time. Right. You have a finite amount of time. And so you have to decide what are the couple of things that I want to give my life to yeah. and be willing to let the rest go. So for me, like 
I realized, you know, when the social media thing happened, I was finding myself thinking a lot about it. Oh, what am I going to post? And, th- and I just stopped. Yeah. I just gave up. I canceled my Facebook. I canceled Instagram. And I just went, I'm not going to make this part of my life. Yeah. I don't like how much time it's taking. And it's so there's nothing wrong with social media, social media inherently, but I just decided I don't, I don't care. Yep. I used to wake up in the morning and I'd, I'd watch sports center yep. and I realized like, Da-na-na. why? Yeah. Da-na-na. It was an hour yeah. to sports center. And right. I realized that's stupid. That's not, they don't care about me. They don't care about yeah. me. It's yeah. not adding to who I am. And so I just, that was an easy sacrifice in the world of sacrifice. Yeah. But what are the things that I actually care about yeah. and being willing to let the other things go and yeah. people are going to go and do things and you're going to go, I'm, I'm not doing that. Yeah. And there are certain, certain seasons that have spaces to allow for those things. We have young kids and so we don't have a ton right. of space. And so I'm taking from something uh, if I want to give it to something else. Yep, and yep. so I don't have an infinite amount of time. And so I, I give my time to a couple of things. Yep. And I give basically all my time to just those three or four things. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Work, family, self-exercise, care, like those types of things. Yep. And then a little bit of hobby time. Right. And then the world, that's it. Yeah. That's all the time I got. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I remember as a kid watching uh, John Maxwell videotapes, and he would always say that Jesus said, this one thing I do, uh, or Paul said, this one thing I do, not these 10 things I dabble with, you know? And uh, I think there's something so powerful about priority, priority. I think for a lot of people, uh, time management is a struggle because we're, we're prioritizing wrong. And, you know, you've heard of the Pareto principle, maybe the 80-20 rule. And it's such a powerful idea that if you prioritize properly 10 things, right? The two most important will give you an 80% return on your investment. And so prioritizing is literally everything, you know? And you think about, you mentioned your deathbed, when you think about, hey, when I'm old, God willing, looking back on my life, uh, no one is like, boy, I just wish I played more golf, Mm -hmm. right? Nobody's like, boy, I just wish I played more video games, right? What are they saying? I didn't spend time with my son. I never taught my daughter X, Y, Z. I didn't make my marriage a priority, right? And so prioritizing is essential to a fruitful life. And, uh, and I think that just disciplining yourself to say, okay, I do this at work, I do this at home. Here are my 10 things. What's gonna be priority in my life? You know, and, and for us, yeah, I have four kids, you have two kids. It's a big deal, right? I mean, kids and family are a huge part of our you know, day to day. And, uh, and we say it all the time, like we leave the office and it's like, Mm -hmm. well, now I'm going to my real job. Right. Because it's Mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to give my kids and my wife, the scraps, you know, the leftovers. And, and, uh, I tell my boys, sometimes my boys are like, you know, dad, dad, come and do this with us. And I go, no, I'm making, I'm taking mom out on a date. And they're like, oh, come on, don't take her out on a date. Come and do this. I say, listen, I chose her. And I chose Thea, your, your sister, because she's, she's adopted. I said, I didn't choose you guys. I love you guys. <laughs> but, but listen, she, mom's priority here. Yeah. And, uh, and that's the way it's going to be. And so even, even showing them that, uh, hey, a healthy marriage puts the marriage before the kids. Mm-hmm. And that helps me love the kids more, not less. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's one of the, one of the tricks. But, but I know for you, you know, time management with kids, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a give and take. It's not mm-hmm. clean, you yeah. know. Um, so I don't know if you have any thoughts about that, but, uh, but how do you, like, when you think about family, Mm -hmm. uh, how, how is that a balance for you? Yeah. I feel like, you know, over the last 10 years, there's been all this talk about work-life balance. And I think the idea is good, but balance is actually a myth, right? It's a tension, like work-life tension, because it it implies that you can actually do something significant without giving it a lot of time. Mm. And so if you want to accomplish something, if you want to be used by God professionally, you want to do something great in your career, you can't do that on 15 hours a week, right? You have to give your time to your work. Yes. And so, yeah, that's a pendulum. You can work 90 hours a week and sacrifice everything. That's not God's best, but you're not going to be used by God working 20 hours a week, probably to the fullest extent. Now, listen, stay at home mom. Like there's different ways of life. Yeah. There's different ways you can give yourself to that. But understanding that I have to give a lot of time to my work and a lot of time to my family. Yes. And so that is a constant tension. It's seasons, it's push and pull. Yeah. And that's why managing your calendar yep. is so important so that you're strategically making time for both. And yep. so like you said, it's when I go home, I'm all in at home. Yep. When I'm at work, I'm all in at work. It's and good. so there are certain weeks that things are crazy here at the church. Yep. And then there are certain weeks that are slower and it's more of an ebb and flow yep. than this perfect, I work 40 hours and then I give my family 40 hours and then it all works so per- It's like, yep. that's not real life. Yeah. And so Mark Batterson is a pastor down in DC says, I want to be famous first with my family. Ooh, it's good. And so just living with the understanding that 
Like they are my first priority. Yeah. And yet God has called me to certain things that require my time as well. That's and good. I need to, that's why I don't have time for much else. Yeah. You want to do those two, two things well? Right. There's 98% of your life is spoken for right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's so you know? good. Yep. I think, you know, as we, as we wrap this up, like one thing or two things, you know, what comes to my mind when it comes to like, Hey, you know, obviously I said, Hey, try this for 30 days, plan every hour of your day for 30 days, you know, start the 10, five, one 90 day kind of cadence for where am I headed in life? All those things are really practical. I gave you block your work time, time with God, Sabbath and church, sleep, key relationships, physical exercise, hobbies, all that stuff. We, we talked through kind of the different blocks and everything else, but just in a real practical level, I think a lot of people struggle to really plan their time for two reasons. One laziness, right? Like we just, we just are lazy and we have to just nail that to the ground like stop being lazy, make the most of your time. Two, this one's even harder than laziness, selfishness, mm -hmm. selfishness. I just want to do what I want to do. And, and here's the deal. You can't follow Jesus and do what you want to do, period. I mean, Bonhoeffer said it most famously, right? When Jesus calls a man, he bids him come and die. <laughs> and Jesus teaches us that when you die to self, you live, that this is where real life is found. So closing thoughts from you, maybe one thing mm -hmm. that would encourage people or one thing that you would encourage them to do. Yeah. If they're not planning their calendar, that's yeah. step one. Yeah. But then if you are actually looking at it and going, does my calendar reflect my priorities? Yeah. That's and if so I, good. if I do this for the rest of my life, Will it lead me to the place that I want to be at the end of my life? Wow. The way I'm spending my time. So does my calendar actually reflect, reflect my priorities? And is it building the life and the person that I want to be? And I think most of us would look at our calendar and go, kind of yes mm. and kind of mm. no. Mm. You know. So good. There's your 30 minutes, friends. Listen, make one, two, three significant changes as you hear this content. If this was helpful, would you like it? Would you subscribe? Would you share it on social? Help us reach more people. The Devoted Life Podcast, last Thursday of every month. Glad that you are here. You will never regret devoting your energy, your time, and your best to following Christ. God bless. We'll see you soon. Switching.